Joining me now are Rupesh Choksi of AT&T and Sanjay Uppal of VMware. Sanjay and Rupesh, thanks both for joining me today. Um, Sanjay, what practical advice can you give to companies that are now encountering their network transformation journey? Yeah, so network transformation is becoming an integral part of digital transformation. And I think one of the ways that companies should think about it differently is not to think of the network as being comprised of a set of hardware devices, but to really think of it as a service. As a service that is being provided by the likes of AT&T, and as a service that links together cloud and virtualization functions. So when you look at it from that standpoint and you match together what your requirements are for applications, then that naturally leads you into a transforming of the network, which then, right. uh, which then really en enables your digital transformation. And Rupesh, what advice would AT&T give? Sure, so you know, I think as, as Sanjay mentioned, right, it's uh, kind of like the CIOs that we talk with, they think about sort of, you know, the network, the infrastructure, and the applications, right? And uh, the digital transformation is kind of powering the movement to agility and uh, sort of, you know, benefits that are outcome driven. And what I would recommend is sort of, you know, take a look at what are the business drivers, right? So what is driving that digital transformation? take a look at sort of, you know, what is your transformation planning process, right? Mm -hmm. The architecture, the blueprint, spend time with the solutioning, you know. We work with a lot of customers, you know, around the globe, kind of as a trusted partner, as an advisor, through that process. And then when you go into the deployment mode, you have to think, you know, big, you have to think broad, because there's a lot of technologies, to Sanjay's point, coming together. But at the end, it's a platform for innovation, right? So it will help you drive more. Sanjay, it was only a year ago that we were asking the question, what is SD-WAN? But now we've moved on, and the question is, how do I actually implement SD-WAN in my enterprise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really dramatic the way that SD-WAN has grown. You know, just five years ago, to your point, there wasn't even a term called SD-WAN. Right. We were just calling it cloud-delivered WAN because we felt that the cloud is the network, and the network being provided by, by service providers primar primarily but now it's moved into the software defined because everything is becoming software defined. You know, the intelligence is just moving to software. The reason for that is agility. You can move much faster, you can add more services, you can decrease services, you can roll things out from a worldwide standpoint because it's all in the software. So now, five years from, you know, roughly six years from the time we started uh, VeloCloud, it's that you know, tens of thousands of companies are looking at software defined WAN. It's becoming the lingua franca uh, right. of the network. Yes. Rupesh, what are the benefits of SD-WAN that you are seeing for your customers? You know, so I agree with Sanjay in terms of, it's like the, the buzzword, it is the word, <laughs> yes. right? In terms of the software control intelligence. I think from a customer lens, you know, I agree it's the agility, right? So agility drives business outcomes. So software-defined networking, you know, delivers on agility. Adding locations, you know, adding more services, being able to make the adjustments that are needed, et cetera. The second place where I see a lot of opportunity is in terms of visualization of the entire network, right? Because it's become more complicated. Yep. You have a lot more sites and the hub locations and whether you go to certain clouds, how does your security profile look like? So the visualization of the network is very important. And the third and you know, very important for a lot of customers is the ability to improve the total cost of ownership, right? Because it all boils down to what yes. is that cost of ownership, right? And we see benefits across all three. And Sanjay, at the end of the day, this all does come down to finances. Businesses do have to be aware of total cost of ownership. Absolutely, and I think it really starts off from the ROI. Like, what, what are you trying to achieve from the investment that you're making in your network transformation? Right. I think when you look at that, what the network is doing now is transforming how the business runs. It's no longer just about the bits and bytes of the network. It's about how the network enables business. So whether you're a retail company or your finance or your manufacturing, there are all these new applications that are coming to, to bear. There are the new business models coming to bear and the network has never been more relevant in how right. to get this done. Yeah. And so we are finding out that the networking people now have a seat at the table right. when it's the chief strategy officers, when it's the chief executive officer, the C-level types because that network transformation is driving these new businesses and if, it's, you know, if they don't get to the forefront of how the network is getting transformed, they're going to get left behind. I think all enterprises recognize that, which is why we've seen this dramatic yeah. growth in the yeah. software-defined WAN right. space. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, you know, I use this line all the time, networking is cool again, right? It's cool again, yeah. so. 
So what might we see for the rest of 2019 from AT&T regards SD-WAN? You know, a little bit into 2018, right, where we finished strong, a lot of momentum with the customers. Uh, you know, in the September, October timeframe, we did a press release, you know, AT&T, largest uh, SD-WAN provider in the world, deploying 28,000 locations. Very strong partnership with VMware, Velo Cloud. We work together, both from a innovation collaboration perspective, but also from a deployment perspective, right? So industry awards, customer recognition, very strong 18. Now, if you look ahead in 2019, it is more and more about sort of, you know, for us, kind of bundling and packaging and bringing different things together. So we have recently launched a new offer called SD-WAN Plus, again in partnership with the VMware Velo Cloud team here. Uh, and what that is doing is starting to take a look at a more holistic kind of bundle for the customer with our VPN services, our broadband services with SD-WAN and delivering a highly secure solution, right? We have a very comprehensive portfolio. I think the momentum is going to continue to grow. I mean, we are working with you know, small customers, mid-sized customers, large enterprise, global, the verticals that Sanjay mentioned. So it's going to be a fantastic 2019. And Sanjay, how will VMware help AT&T with its SD-WAN ambitions? So firstly, I want to say that we've never been more pleased with a partnership than the one that we've had with AT&T. You know, with, for a large company, uh, partnering with another, another large one, it's really the people that make it work. And right. so, you know, because we're able to work so seamlessly together, we're solving all these really difficult problems for the enterprise. And as Rupesh was saying, initially we started off with the larger enterprises, now we're bringing it down into the broader market, because that's really where the, real, the numbers add up. You're talking about tens of thousands of customers that would be adopting this. Right. From a VMware standpoint, we're all about software, we're all about agility and then mapping that into all the prowess that AT&T brings to the table in terms of running this as a service, the match could not have been better. Sanjay and Rupesh, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you, thank, thank you. you very much.